I'm so happy it's Sunday. I survived the Cider Fest. Oh my god, you guys. Let me tell you about yesterday. Yesterday was so fun. It was really, really hot again. I couldn't believe how hot it was. So, pro tip. If you want to sell what you sew and you're thinking about being an outside vendor, always be prepared for the weather, whether it means bringing a change of clothes. It was so hot yesterday. You know, thank God I always take my sewing scissors wherever I go. I went to a vendor to one of the breweries and bought one of their t-shirts and was cutting it up with scissors and made myself a nice lightweight tank top. And everyone in my booth was laughing with me. But it made me look awesome because I'm like, bitch, I sew for a living. <laughs> you know, like, of course I have scissors. Let's just make a shirt right here in the booth. <laughs> it was a blast. Um, lots of young, silly people. One thing that was really, really funny that I noticed was, um, you know, I live in Virginia, so marijuana was legalized, you know, um, back in July. And, you know, I've always had the pot fabric up. It sells really well. There were so many funny conversations in my booth yesterday about people talking about pot. Like one girl and people commenting about how we can talk about this now. Isn't this weird that like we can just talk about this now? And the, the one guy walks up and he's like, oh, spinach. I love spinach. <laughs> And another girl was said that she found out her dad's been secretly smoking pot like pretty much her whole life and she didn't know. Um, and then there was like uh, a girl who was buying the pot leaf doggy bandana and she kept like trying to get her girlfriend to like buy one to match and she was like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's just really funny, you know, uh, the way things change like that. But the funniest thing that happened the whole day, definitely my favorite person. I was like, I need to start thinking about when I do these stories from the booth, who are my favorite people? And the last one the bourbon fest the lady with the funky crocs she was definitely definitely what probably my favorite person that show and there was like a really cute married couple that bought an apron and it turns out they'd been married on the exact same day as my parents and the husband was like anything to make her happy and they were just ugh, it was adorable that was the bourbon fest this is the cider fest my favorite person at the cider fest was this tall skinny young girl who bought a doggy bandana for her parrot <laughs> i'm not kidding no or i'm sorry her cockatiel of her bird and i had one with feathers on it and she was like i have been wanting to put a bandana on my bird forever <laughs> and she's buzzed mind you and uh so we were talking about it. i was like well you could probably you know use a little hemp rope because if the bird's picking at the hemp not like ribbon you know it should be fine and she's like yeah that's perfect Da, 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 da. And I was like, go on my Instagram, go on my Facebook, post a picture. Like, I have to see if this works out. She was so awesome and fun. Um, and I, I, it was just hilarious. The other crazy thing that happened was I was out to brunch last Sunday. And this maniac drives into the parking lot. And he's obviously on something. And he's obviously having some kind of mental break. He's screaming about how he's the savior and he just went to church. This guy in a red truck, big red truck, comes and blocks him in, calls the police, saves the day. Everyone was super excited about red truck guy, you know, getting this crazy guy off the road and uh, into custody. And I bought him a beer and I'm hanging out my booth and I look over and I'm like, it's red truck guy. So red truck guy was there with his girlfriend. They were super fun and nice. It was just a really good vibe yesterday. You know, I work these shows all the time. And anytime people are drinking, especially in the heat, you know, anything can happen. They're usually really fun. Some people suck, you know. And then because I sell masks, there's like at least one out of every three shows I get a kooky duke in there who wants to tell me about how masks don't work and blah, blah, blah. And I don't care. You're wrong. Go away. You know, and I got to sit there and just hold my tongue and be polite because I'm working. It is what it is. I sold a ton of masks yesterday. All to, almost every mask I sold was to a teacher. Um, and I was giving away masks again because the teachers, all the drunk teachers, they really do deserve a drink, don't they? They were all so sweet and wonderful. And it was like, you know, um, they were all talking about, I had like the fuck this mask. And the comment, I was just like, I wish I could wear this to work. I wish I could wear this to work. I'm going to be wearing these at work forever. And I was like, yeah, I really feel like I should put out an ad that's like, please get vaccinated so I can stop sewing masks. Like, I never want to sew a pleat ever again. You know? <laughs> I mean, the thing with the masks, it's been a wonderful experience. If you've watched all my videos, you know, it led me to you guys, which has been great. Um, I've met so many incredible people making masks that I wouldn't trade that for the world. 
but I think we're all having a little bit of mask fatigue at this point. And so I had so many wonderful teachers. I had a whole pile of masks from last Christmas and fall that I had set aside because I really, last year, didn't think I'd still be selling them at this point. And um, I made sure that um, any of the teachers and some of the healthcare workers too, if they mentioned it to me, um, I gave them a free like Christmas or holiday mask. So they'd have something cool and um, festive, you know, to wear. And I was like, cause I know you're still good gonna be wearing this and they're all like thank you you know it was good we love our teachers you know try to take good care of them and you know what if you're making masks and you've got some kids in school do something nice make your teacher a couple of cool little fun school masks and send them in you know why not what a great way to show them that you appreciate them so anyway um let's see we had parrot bandana girl we had red truck guy we had lots of great teachers um there was um one little girl that was well, I call her a little girl and I'm sure she's actually a grown woman but my booth it was so hot and and I'm always in the same spot and I love my spot because I get some shade and I will very often use that as a cue to draw people in hey you want to come in and get out of the rain or hey you want to come in and get in the shade especially if they have a baby you know like bring that baby in here let them sit in the shade you know and uh, and then I'll you know talk to them about baby bibs or baby onesies or aprons or whatever and it's a really good way you know just to get people talking so I had this young couple and they were standing behind my booth in the shade and that's where I have all the aprons and she starts like looking at the aprons and she was uh, loving the holiday two-sided aprons which I've got a couple to show you I want to show you how good they came out so stay tuned I'll show you at the end um and uh she was like oh 40 I could tell she's young she probably doesn't own a house or cook dinner every night but she was really loving them and she was like 40 dollars and I looked at her and I was like honey you know you'd spend 40 dollars on a bar tab without even thinking about it and she was like I would and I said, and you'll have this for 10 years easily. And she's like, I'm going to do it. And she got, I knew it would be the first one to go. The one with the super cute snowmen, the cooking snowmen and the little gnomes on the back. And she was like, it's so cute. I had one chick who almost bought an apron because she was so hot. She said she wanted to take her shirt off. And I was like, do it. <laughs> she had a sports bra on, so it would have been a big deal. But it would have been great great, you know, publicity for me to have this chick walking around in nothing but my apron. <laughs> It could happen. At a brew fest, it could happen. But anyways, I didn't sell a ton of aprons. I was cramming all week to make aprons because I'd sold so many at the last two shows. And I didn't sell a ton at this one. Um, but it's funny how it works out that way. Like some shows, you'll sell a whole bunch of one thing and not a lot of another. And then the next show, you'll sell a whole bunch of the thing you didn't sell at the show before. If you're selling what you sew, that's a good pattern to have. You know, you want to make sure that you're selling a variety. You know, if you're making all this stuff and spending all this time and money on the fabric but you're only selling dog bandanas and no one likes your handbags then you might want to reconsider selling those handbags you want to if nobody's buying certain things you definitely want to try to change up your display see if you can't you know draw people's eyes to it more what I do is I have you know I hang everything from clotheslines so on the front of my booth I make sure that I have like my funnest mask fabrics you know so if people are laughing at that fabric I can be like hey I've got an apron in that fabric too you know and draw them in or I always have like some of my onesies the one I hang up at the brew fest says um, it's 5 a.m. somewhere and it has a baby bottle on it and then I there, I usually put up a kitchen towel either one that says don't make me poison you or last time I cooked hardly anyone got sick and then I keep my ears open so when people are walking by and they're pointing and they're laughing I can start a conversation with them that way and I also makes lets them know that in my booth back here in the shade the stuff you don't see there's a lot more to look at so then they come in and they're socializing and talking in the booth um, and that's a great way to draw them and get sales the scrunchies were flying off the shelves i'm making scrunchies with my eyes closed now and i'm all the every time the cuss word ones harry potter nightmare for christmas um i did a whole i actually made some with the scrap fabrics left over from the aprons with the pumpkins and the christmas stuff and those sold really well too so I was stoked about that and the coolest thing was the girls were putting them on their wrists and wearing them and then they would go out into the like long lines where they're waiting for their drinks and chatting with people and some girl would be like oh I love that scrunchie where'd you get it and she's pointing them my way and so all day the scrunchies were just like there was like girls marching up to get awesome scrunchies because they saw another girl in line with one. Um, so I was extremely happy about that. So, you know, just make sure like at the, if you're going to do it and you're going to have the outside booth, you want to have like a table up front when people are walking by 
where they see little things like scrunchies or magnets that they can stop, put their hands on, look at them, and that gives you an opportunity to start talking. So anyway, I also always keep, um, I bought like a rinky-dink little mannequin, a metal mannequin, um, for 30, 30 or 40 dollars on Amazon um, that I keep up front and I always have an apron on it too so that people can see the aprons and if I'm not hearing a lot of chatter about that apron I'll swap it out with a different one you know like whatever apron is up there is I want to be like my showpiece apron I want people to be like oh look at this you know they always like the pockets you know and I want them to see like how awesome and quality made it is so they'll come in and take a look at the other prints. The double sided aprons went, uh, were super popular and I made most of them out of the Hobby Lobby brother sister designs but I found these two prints that I love, The Magical Christmas by Lisa Audit and Seeds of Gratitude by Susan Wingett and they both have this just really soft look to them so I did this full apron. I felt like the Christmas one was soft enough that I could get away with the pocket. Uh, with the coordinating pocket. So the back side looks really, I love how this came out, you know, just wonderful Christmas and I kept the straps the same. And then the front, I did the fall because I feel like the fall season's a little bit longer than Christmas with the pocket. And even though it's got the Christmas pocket, I didn't feel like it was overly Christmassy. Now this one was different. This one was the, you know, pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. Santa, Santa, Santa. These are too bold, I think, for me to coordinate the pocket. So I just, I did not flip over the pocket. I kept the same pocket shape from the awesomely easy apron pattern. And I just didn't do the fold. I just kept it upright. Um, and so that came out great. And this one is my favorite. I really, I like, I'm probably gonna end up keeping this for myself. <laughs> if I don't sell this at the next show, then it's a sign. Um, I love the snow globes. This was a brother sister fabric. And I did, I tucked over the pocket because the, the colors coordinated so well that you really, you know, I mean, you that's pumpkin, but it's not like screaming pumpkin at you from far away. And I, this is like, oh God, look at it. Favorite fall print, right? This is my, this is winning for favorite fall print of the year, I think, this one. So anyways, those were super, super popular. Um, and I just was like really pleased with the response. Um, so definitely think about doing that. Even if you're just giving someone a gift, what a great gift. Someone who loves to cook or bake, especially at the holidays. Um, anything else? Let's see. Oh, okay. So I have to say a big thank you to my viewer, Kathy, because she pointed me in the direction of another YouTuber named, um, the quilting cowboy. Now I work so much between, um, you know, running the daycare and doing all my sewing and my daughter being autistic and everything else that we have going on and, you know, mom life, um, that I don't get a lot of time to sit around and actually watch other YouTubers. Um, almost never. So I'm, you know, kind of blind to a lot of these people out here doing awesome things. Um, so I started watching this guy and he's so funny and silly and um, he's got a fabric line out with Wyndham Fabrics who I absolutely love Wyndham Fabrics and um, he was offering to send some fabrics out to some people um, who'd be willing to make some stuff with it, you know, for him to show off and, and uh, Kathy pointed me in his direction so I definitely sent him an email right away and I got a response, fingers crossed. He's only gonna pick like two or three people, but I'm really hoping he'll pick me um, because I'm so ready to get going on some art quilting. I tried to start some art quilting videos way back before COVID and then as all of you who've been with me through all of COVID knows, we got hit by the mask tidal wave and all that got put on hold. Now that I'm over the hump with Annie's stuff and um, I've banged out, you know, a whole bunch of small projects um, that I had for clients. And um, I'm so ready to just get back to my art. I want to do some, you know, videos on intro to art quilting and things like that. I've already got a couple um, custom projects that I'm going to be working on. And if I'm lucky enough that the quilting cowboy picks me, um, then I can showcase some of his this fabric line that he's got and work it all together into some awesome videos I think you guys are really, really, really gonna enjoy. So I'm super stoked. Um, I've got more patterns that are gonna be going up in the Etsy shop and working on that too. So please just bear with me. I'm only one person. I'm trying to do 10 things at once. Um, but I'm very excited in the direction that everything's heading and I hope you guys are too. And as always, if you are old, thank you, thank you so much for being with me. You always make me feel so special. Um, and I definitely feel like I have formed some friendships with some of you and I really value that. Um, and if you are new, I hope that you enjoy this and uh, if you love fabric and um, 
you know, just want to make cool, funky stuff, please like and subscribe so that you can join us on our journey. And um, take care, you guys. It's Sunday. The only thing I have to do today is drop off my children, and then I'm going to make brunch, and I'm going to sit my fat ass in my backyard and enjoy my garden and do nothing. <laughs> so anyways, I love you guys. Take care. I hope to see you soon.